What's good, beloved? Welcome to an all new episode of Vino Noir. Why do we call it Vino Noir? Because it is Noirs. Drinking Vino. Drinking Vino. And you know what this means. You know it's what it is. It's Wind Out Cosa. Every single Every day. Every single day, Wind Out Cosa. You know what it is. Wind Out Cosa have come through. They're moving ahead um, at quite an astronomical pace. And if you go onto their website, there is a new learning platform where you're going to be able to see this and a bunch of other videos yeah. on grapes specifically. Yeah, and when you see these faces, click click on click on that. that what are we doing today? We're... Today we're doing Chardonnay. Chardonnay is probably my probably my favorite white grape. Probably Tools's uh... Who raised you? <laughs> <laughs> Whose family were you constructed? Because I don't know you now. Oh, love Chardonnay, love Chardonnay, love everything about it. Chardonnay, what to say, second most popular white grape um, in terms of availability. Um, originally from the Burgundy region, east coast of France, and made its way into South Africa in around about the 1970s when it was smuggled in by Donny Devet and a couple of other wily characters. Yeah. So, fairly young grape um, in this particular region, but as far as the world goes, one of the most expansive. And one of the most delicious. But what's up with the stigma around around Chardonnay? You'll hear things like ABC, mm -hmm. anything but Chardonnay. What's yeah. up with the stigma? What's up with the housewife chat around Chardonnay? What's, where did that even come from? Well, I think the, the thing about Chardonnay as a characteristic in the grape is that it's relatively resilient, right? Mm -hmm. So it's quite easy to grow. And also, it has the ability to be kind of like a chameleon and take on a mamba of characteristics that yeah. a grape shouldn't typically be allowed to do just by its own solar existence. So then what happened is that you found a lot of easy ways to be able to make commercially successful Chardonnay. Mm. Not too much of an opinion, fairly flat, and be, was the type of thing that was rolled out on conveyor belts. So then the connotation about Chardonnay became this thing yeah um and that's why we have the abcs the anything but chardonnays but that stigma now is kind of coming to an end you know because of the fact that we have so many different beautiful contrasting chardonnays it's not it's just the same thing like a conveyor belt situation no chardonnay is able to be made in various styles from the light fruity and acidic to the oak to rich buttery uh type of variant my faves this guy we have tools is tools is least face man. <laughs> the oak the butter oh, i love it i love it the, the butterscotch even sometimes in some, ah. in some particular notes sometimes fantastic food wine uh great with uh sea, seafood lots of texture about it so it's very easy to be able to put into some sort of pairing um, mm -hmm. as far as food is concerned but i think that for um a Dirty rule. We'll go into the white wine rules that of white meats, chicken, and such a bit, yeah. and then a little bit of butter. Yeah. Meat. So, so things like, for instance, if you're having seafood, for instance, prawns. Maybe you're having a young hake. Uh, also, if you're having pork or pasta dishes that are probably cream based. That's probably yeah. what you. That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah. pair a chardonnay with. Indeed. indeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think. And I'm if you're having oysters, sorry, if you're having oysters, also not a bad, not a bad combination as well. Let's try an oyster. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And with this, you can discover the tasting pack. Um, the many flavors and characters of Chardonnay, but I think that as far as we are concerned, we're going to leave you to your job and close out every single day with a BX. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs>